Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and I got a request on my YouTube channel to paint a sunset. So I thought, hey, why not? Um, so all I've done here is I taped a 5x7 watercolor card down to my piece of foam core, and I drew a horizon line about two inches up from the bottom. So I've got three inches on the top and two inches on the bottom. So you're probably thinking, Lindsay, why do you do that? Why don't you put it right in the middle? Because there's something called the rule of thirds. Um, basically, now that's not one third of the paper exactly, but you don't want to have things too symmetrical or matchy-matchy, or it tends to lead to a boring painting. Uh, what we're going to do here, what I am doing, is wetting my paper with a one inch wash brush. Now I got a question on my um, Ask Crafter about what brushes do I recommend. Um, there's so many good brands out there. The Royal brand has very affordable brushes. Um, but what you want to look for are these acrylic handles, and I'll tell you why. For acrylic and watercolor painting, because if you get distracted, like I do, if you have kids, you probably get distracted when you paint sometimes. If you leave this in the water by mistake, the, um, the handles won't swell and split like wooden handle brushes will. So this, the ferrule won't become loose, and you'll have a nice brush. Also, the beveled edge is great for scratching detail. All right, we have wet paper. What we're going to do is uh, put a little ultramarine blue. hope I have this on my palette. I have a... Uh, I rescued this palette. I used to be my uh, one of my travel palettes, and found it in a bag, and it had some of the colors were a little moldy looking. So I cleaned it up and uh, saved what I could for paint. So I think I've got some <laughs> some ultramarine here. Um, I'm going to add it to one of the corners, and um, we're going to get some really nice colors in here. And I'm going to add a little of a thalo or turquoise right up here in the corner because um, I really want to get a nice rainbow of color. I'm going to put that right in there just to work it in there just to give me some nice saturation. Um, I'm going to work in a little bit of lemon yellow and I'm going to have to be careful not to cross them over because I really don't want them to turn um, to turn green. So I'm going to add some of this down near the horizon. That lemon has a green cast to it anyway so I think I'll go in there into some uh, some cad yellow too. You can skip the lemon. I guess that didn't work as well as I thought. And I'm going to add a little bit of um, alizarin crimson in here. I want to have a nice, um, vivid sky. I'll just kind of work that across. Isn't that pretty? It's very, um, very plain right now. I think I want to uh, get a little bit more color in there because it's going to dry lighter. We've got our watercolors. And yes, a little more, a little more crimson there. We can always lift some out later when we get to doing the clouds. Put that down a little bit. And now, what we do at the top, we want to mirror on the bottom. So I'm going to bring that uh, yellow over. I'm going to uh, introduce some of that crimson. And some of the blue. And the thing about a sunset that makes it a really great beginner project is that um, you really, you don't, the only color you worry about is in the sky. Everything else is kind of silhouetted because of the bright, vivid colors. Now we want to add some, I think I want even want a little more blue in that sky. Uh, it's just, uh, I want to have a little more contrast. So I'm bringing that blue down a little bit more. I'm doing to the bottom, I do the top. Sometimes if I feel like my colors aren't blending enough, I'll just give it a little tap. Let them... Do the thing. Look at that. They're kind of moving around now. I'm going to use my paper towel and I'm going to lift out a couple clouds here. I like how the uh, the sky is kind of at a diagonal. I want to increase that motif. We'll add some color to these clouds later. A few skinnier ones down near the horizon. I'm just uh, I'm bending my paper towel and getting a dry spot as I go. And I want to put these um, reflections of these clouds on the water as well. All right, now if you end up lifting too much out, just wet it down and repaint it. Not a big deal. Um, your watercolor paper is very durable and it can handle a lot of that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go dry my paper, dry my paper off with my heat gun, come back, and we're going to finish this up. All right, now you're seeing the dry paper. Look how much lighter the paint is now that it's dry. That's something you want to keep in mind whenever you paint, that it does dry lighter. Now I want to use kind of a bigger, floppier brush to paint. I kind of, like I mentioned it before, match the brush with what you're painting. I'm painting clouds, so I went to a bigger, floppier brush. Um, now the, the reflections you're going to find on the clouds are going to kind of 
um, be a little opposite. The tops of our clouds are going to have that crimson, um, that crimson look. So you just kind of draw your top of your clouds with the crimson here. Clouds really close here, right in the yellow, are actually going to stay pretty yellow, pretty pretty white. So we're going to leave those alone. But we're going to uh, mirror what we're doing here. Remember, we mirror on the bottom. We get reflections in the water. Go in and pull some color out if you get too much on there. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, and I'm going to let it mix um, in with the red that I just put in there because we want that beautiful glow of sunset clouds. Or maybe they're sunrise clouds. You know, I really don't know. What are what do these look like to you? So your picture can be whatever you want. And I can even add a little bit of a rim of the crimson on the bottom of my clouds and just let it blend. The less you do, I think, to a sunset, um, the better it's going to look. It's going to look natural. You don't want it to look like a human painted it. You want it to look um, very ethereal and um, natural. So that's what I'm going for here. But don't be afraid of the color. It's only a piece of paper. Um, you can almost tell, I think, when you look at a painting and someone af was afraid. You know, you don't want to be afraid in your painting. There's no reason to. Nobody has to see it if you don't like the way it turns out. And if you get a big glob of color, just set your, um, your, just blot your brush off, set it in, and you can soak it right up. And if anything is too dark, you can go ahead and blot it, and that will take away any of the darkness. And I want to do, again, a little bit of, just trace the bottom of that cloud there. And I can even throw in a few orange clouds if I want to, just, you know, here and there. Just the, just the hint of some clouds. You don't have to be too specific. I wouldn't be too specific, actually. I would be kind of vague with it if you're just kind of adding them for imagination. You know, just kind of suggest that they're there. I can add some purpley clouds up high, and I think I'll do that because this is kind of a little boring. Um, even though we're going to add more stuff to it, I, I really want it to be kind of interesting. So I'm mixing up a little bit of purple with my alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue on my palette, and I'm just going to throw in just a few puffies right over there. They're getting a little bit more, they're a little bit darker. The sun's not reaching up there so much and put a few streaks in there and I got to do it to the bottom because we're reflecting, everything is getting reflected. So, you know, just be vague about it. That's almost like the sun, the sun is like right, right over there, I think. All right, now we're gonna dry this again and we're gonna paint our, um, our land areas which are really gonna make the sunset come alive. So let me dry this and I'll be right back. All right, my paper is dry. I'm back. Your picture probably looks something like this. Um, now I'm going to show you how to mix up a black. Now, maybe you want to go and use some uh, painting, some drawing ink, or uh, maybe you just want to use black from a tube. But I really recommend that you make your own black because it's going to match your painting better. So what I'm going to do is uh, grab the strongest colors that I used in this piece. And um, a lot of times I use ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, but I haven't used burnt sienna, so I don't want to introduce that now. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to grab my crimson, and I'm going to grab some turquoise. That's going to give me a really, really dark purple. Let me show you here. Almost black. And then I'm just going to kill the purple with a little bit of my yellow. So really, I mean, talking about color theory, you're basically, you know, you're dealing with your primary colors and the different, you know, amounts of, of each color to get the colors that you want. And then, you know, I might add a little bit more blue to this just to darken it up a little bit. And when you're making your black, I would try to, and just when you're custom mixing anything, mix more than you think you're going to need um, because it's sometimes hard to go back and get that exact same color, especially when you are a beginner. So I'm just going to keep mixing until I've got a big puddle of whatever I need. And, you know, as it shifts too much to this or too much to that, you can um, you can add other colors. I'd rather have it a little purple than a little yellow because I want to have a nice inky color. So I have almost this, like, midnight black here that, um, that I'm going to use for my painting. I'm going to bring my painting back. And I am going to use my number six round. And I am just going to start painting. I think that I will put, um, let's see. I think I'll put, like, a little island over here. So let me just kind of, gonna, I'm, I'm painting upside down, so um, 
you're seeing it right side up, but we in frame, there we go. Um, so I just want to let you know that in case you're trying to paint upside down. <laughs> I'm painting upside down, so you don't have to. And then I want to make sure that under the horizon line, I do the exact same thing or, or as close as I can. No, don't worry about it being too perfect. This is art. It's not photography. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I think I really want to encourage that glow, like the sun's just going down and I want that glow. So what I think I'll do is I'll take some crimson and I'm just going to drip it like really intensely right into the wet edge of that, um, of that mountain. We're going to see how this works. It may not work that great. It may be awesome. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. it. Almost looks like the sun is like reflecting off the edge of that. Go in some more with that inky color. Maybe a little yellow in there. Let's just see what happens. Why don't we? This is experimentation. This is fun. Let's uh, let's add a little bit of yellow in there and see if we get see if it turns into a muddy mess or see if we get something awesome here. And I think you know it doesn't matter with watercolor, especially above all the other mediums. I think you can paint with it for. 50 years and still find something new every time you go to paint. And I want to redefine my horizon line, even though you generally don't see too much of it when you have a uh, when you have a silhouette. I just wanted to pull something in there. I felt like it just needed something. And I want to mirror that glow uh, underneath the horizon line as well. So I'm just going to go ahead, barely extending what I've already done, just so I get that glow of red on the edge. I like it. Works for me. And let's see on the, do I want to have anything on the other side? Maybe a little bit of something over there. Um, yeah, why not? Let's go back with, with our dark mix and just kind of pull a little something across. Maybe so it's just kind of like a couple mountains off into the distance meeting in the middle. Maybe there's a road going through there. This is your imaginary landscape. You can, um, you can make it however you want it. That's what's so great about art. And I'm going to go in and add some more dark in there after, but I did love the look of that glow on the edge. I'm just cleaning my brush. Before I um, dip my brush into my paint palette, I usually rinse it off because I don't want to contaminate my colors. This isn't my favorite painting palette, but I did want to get it out and see if I had uh, successfully cleaned out my uh, my palette. I, I, I always have a lot of um, painting palettes going because I uh, used to teach watercolor classes to kids and adults and I think I might start teaching to adults again uh, the watercolor because it's just such a such a joy to see somebody paint you know that's they don't think they, they don't think they can do it and then they do it and they feel so awesome all right can you believe that I can just gab and gab and not <laughs> anybody in the room when they oh yeah you probably can if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time Oh, um, now a little bit of that red. I love the color. I do like putting color in. See, you would not get the color in your shadows if you were using black from a tube. So that's another reason. You can just fill your shadows full of glorious color. And you can keep adding color until you get... I just love that. I love it. Do you love it? You can't answer me, but I love it. You can leave a comment if you love it. You can leave, leave a comment if you think, Lindsay, you've totally lost your marbles. Um, I don't know what you're talking about there. That was crazy looking. <laughs> but I love it. I think it's uh, I think it's awesome. Yeah. Just dripping that color. The sun's just glowing. It's making everything glow at this hour of the day. I love it. All right, so we also want to add, um, okay, so we've got basically, we've got whatever's so the top of the paper is close to us. That's why the clouds are bigger. Bottom of the paper is closer to us. Stuff in the middle, close to the horizon is further away. I also want to throw my little uh, horizon line in there just with the, dig it in there with the edge of my brush, just so I have a sense of my bearings. And, um, I, but I do want to throw something in to give a little sense of scale. So. I think I'll put a tree in and I think hopefully this dark is dark enough. I think I might mix up just a little bit more just in case I want to make sure I have it nice and uh, inky and ready to roll here. All right. So what I'm going to do is just paint on a tree over here because I really want this kind of uh, lit up area to be my focus. Don't be afraid. I know you're painting over the whole thing, but really don't don't let it don't let it worry you. And uh, by going the whole length of the paper, I'm actually adding some really great scale. 
and I think I'll just throw a few little branches. When I do my branches, I got my brush. I'm just using the tip of my brush. You've got a, uh, you now we could do an autumn sunset here. We've got bare branches, or you could dab on some leaves. You do it in the same color. And I want to put some, just kind of some brush coming up from the bottom. Remember, this is just a quick painting. I'm showing you how to do a landscape. This isn't going to hang in a gallery. Nobody's going to frame it. You know, just have fun with it. Don't don't worry about a thing when you're painting, especially if you're doing one of these quick tutorials of mine. I want you to have fun. I don't want you to worry about it. And I got to turn this around for a second because I have no idea what it looks like. <laughs> painting it upside down. I got to turn it around for a second here. Sorry about that. Just throwing in a few more trees. Bring that down. Maybe I should have like, could have let that stuff dry in the background first. And you know what might be pretty? What if we painted a few geese flying, um, flying south for the winter? They're gonna get bigger as they, oh, they kind of look like seagulls, don't they? Maybe this one's further away. Here we go. Let me give that one a tail. He's closer. We can see a little bit more of him. Uh, maybe I can give him a little nose. Maybe. Maybe if I use my fancy credit card scraper tool, I can give him a little nose. A little beak. There we go. Lead them on there, goose. Lead them to Canada. Is that where they go in the winter? I don't know. I don't think I'd go to Canada in the winter. I think they probably go south. I don't know. I'm no expert, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> well, you know, I think that's just fine. What do you think? Let me sign my name. I gotta turn it around to sign. I can't do that upside down. I can barely write my name right side up. So just put my little initials in here somewhere. L M W 13. Okay. So the true magic, I'm going to dry this off because I want to show you how light everything is when it dries. And I'm also going to show you how to remove that tape so you don't rip your painting. Hopefully be right back. Actually, real quick, I decided before I wanted to do that, I want to darken up my uh, foreground objects. That's the tree and the shrubs there because I felt like they should just be a little bit darker because they're further away from the light source. And I, I really want there to be a um, distinction between those glowy uh, mountains and the really, really silhouetted um, shapes in the foreground. So I am going over them with that same black mix that we made. So we're not going to see any of the colors independently in the um, in the foreground. We're going to it's going to be a lot uh, more solid and it's going to contrast, which is a very important uh, word to know as an artist. It's going to contrast a little bit more. And I think maybe I'll put in maybe another little shrub trying to make a living here. And I'm using my brush straight up and down because I want to get a nice control and yeah now the thing about removing your tape when you're done is that um if you have wet paper it's going to want to pull so the area down here is going to want to pull more than the and rip more than the um area on the dry parts of my tree i kind of want this lacy so i'm adding in more branches but if that scares you you don't have to do it you do whatever you want you can even if you make a huge mistake just dab 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 and it'll look like you have leaves on your trees and it's not a big deal all right so i'm not going to go dry that again I'm going to turn it around for you though. And when I pull the tape off, the thing I find that helps the most, and it might tear a little bit there on the edge, um, is that I kind of pull it, I lay it flat against itself like that, and I just kind of pull it. See, see it does. See how it wants to tear there? I'm going to come in when that happens. I come in from the other side, and it's because the paper is wet. And I warned you that would happen, and it did. But pull it kind of at a right angle away from the painting. You can fix that with a little uh, touch of glue or with a touch of paint when you're done. Okay, on the margin, it's not that big of a deal. I can glue that little flap right down with a little white glue when I'm done. But that's why. It's because the paper's wet. So, see, I will sacrifice my card to show you <laughs> why it happens, what to do, and what not to do. All right, we're going to have time to take this tape off and still be under 20 minutes, barely. All right, and I just think it adds such a pretty frame. And I mentioned before when I was a kid, watercoloring, I always taped my paper down because I loved at the end when I could take my tape off and reveal the beautiful white frame. And that might rip a little bit there. No, it's not. It's doing good. All right, so there you have it. How to paint a sunset or sunrise. You be the judge in watercolor. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.